Hello guys, this is Double Orange 927 here, back again for another video. And here today guys, I am discussing the future of Halo with easily one of the best enemies in a video game ever, the Covenant. The Covenant has been um, essentially an alien alliance that has nearly destroyed humanity, commenced, almost commenced the Great Journey which would have destroyed everything. And they, up until recently, were the biggest threat in the Halo universe. So, what is the future of the Covenant after the events of Halo 4 and 5 and all of them? Since, you know, the Covenant was once this big powerful empire, but now it's finally been brought to its knees by the Arbiter and the Swords of St. Helios. So now the question remains, what is to become of the Covenant? Now, the Covenant, when it finally collapsed, Truth's Covenant, all the remaining fellows had three options. They'd either align themselves with the Arbiter and try to coexist peace with humanity, continue the great journey in a sense that we'd, they'd continue the traditional ways, or do what Jules' faction did, which was basically focus on a different aspect, but still remain the same. For example, Jewel believed in the Promethean Awakening, not the Great Journey. So, now the question has come to rise. So, what, what happened to the Covenant, and is it truly dead? So, the Covenant, in a logical sense, is it dead after Halo 5? If you want the honest answer, I'd say so. When it comes with... The Covenant, you have to understand that they are nowhere near the might and power that they once were. The Covenant now has fallen into the grasp of just being a little splinter group. Factions, they ha they're not even unified anymore. And the fact of this is the only thing that even got close to reviving, and well not reviving, but reunifying the Covenant was when the Didact came along. But after his death, then it just went right back into being split. And this gradually led to its downfall each and every single time. The Covenant at this point wasn't much of a threat anymore. Because, look, is the Covenant truly dead? I don't think so. You know, the Covenant will always find a way to bring themselves back in some form or another. But the point is, is that the Covenant, the traditional Covenant, is dead. The fact is, is that I think 343 is trying to make that clear. Because now, even the Covenant's overall design is completely different. While Halo 4 retained some of the things that Halo Reach did with the designs, you know, somewhat... Halo 5 has done a complete different art direction. Now, is this art direction bad? No, but it's a sign of the direction the Covenant is heading in. Similar to how the Empire is from how it was the Empire, and then transferred into the First Order, which is similar, but it's a different ideology and art style. It's a similar concept on paper, and it works in a very similar way, I would say. The Covenant, in a nutshell, after the events of Halo 3, never grew the same. And that's because back in the original Covenant, and after the death of Truth, it really didn't know where to turn to anymore. You know, it after essentially all of that, it just kept falling apart and apart and apart until it finally reached its collapse under the hands of Fireteam Osiris and the Arbiter. So, essentially now, it's like, you know, like, if the Covenant were no longer the villains of Halo, like, essentially, I believe it comes down to this, to where the Covenant are no longer the main threat. You know, now it's focused more on the Prometheans and Cortana. So, the question is, how can the Covenant exist in Halo 6, and how can they exist in Halo games after? Now, my first answer to that is very simple, actually. For Halo um, 6, I believe what they could do is the Covenant is aligned with Cortana or what remains of it, or at least what remains of Jules' faction. Like, what happens is the Covenant's aligned with Cortana, 
instead of covenant like the covenant weaponry significantly upgraded into more foreigner like technology and it's essentially now the covenant's more of a byproduct to the prometheans and they again work together because well the covenant kind of know now that you know if they don't they're doomed so the covenant then work for you know say cortana so now with that in mind how could the covenant continually progress well the simple ideal is this while the covenant is working for cortana they will leave the door open for like different basically the covenant at this point would need a different like the UNSC and Orbiter's forces, essentially, would need new allies. And that's where I believe you can have something like the Brutes return. Because if you know in the lore, Brutes became allies with the Orbiter, or at least attempted to. Like, most Brutes, anyways. Like, some were still against it. Some still were just trying to conquer and, you know, just survive on their own. But most brutes were trying to serve their way back into humanity. So, the question then remains, you know, could that help in Halo 6? And that'd be a great way for the brutes to return, but key being overall. So, I believe personally though, the Covenant will return as more of a byproduct and service to Cortana. They're not on their own. They're not... A different faction anymore you know Cortana just forms a new alliance whatever the heck it's called I don't know what it's called but you know just I don't know whatever the heck Cortana calls it the created alliance or whatever essentially though but what I'm implying is that Cortana would have rule and stuff and that's how I believe it would go now next question is where would the Covenant go after Halo 6? And I believe personally, the Covenant at this point, I believe is dead. So it, I believe it would need to reform itself for both lore reasons and gameplay reasons. Lore reason being that the Covenant has fallen such a you know, dark path into itself that I couldn't even bear to imagine how it would revive itself back to its former glory at least not for a very long time so seeing something as powerful as like the original covenant i just can't see especially when in a way the the original covenant's power came from its beliefs and religions the fact that hey you serve us and you grant yourself an afterlife it was a religionous cause it wasn't something that you did for militaristic power. It was something you did because, well, you just wanted an afterlife. It's the same reason why religious people in the real world believe in certain things and do certain things. Because, well, they want their afterlife. They want to prove themselves to their quote-unquote lords. And the Covenant kind of work a similar way. Like, the Covenant as a whole, the original Covenant was belief of ideology it they were idealists they were not realists they were not people that were trying to think realistic they were they were just a group that just wanted to prove themselves to their gods and just get an afterlife and they just wanted to uh, have like a salvation inter internal salvation essentially meaning immortality and you know, the prophets did a good job at presenting this. And, you know, but here's the deal. Once when the covenant figured out this was a lie, everything fell apart. So, overall, I can't see a prophet, like, being returned. So, obviously, I don't think the prophets will work that way. Now, what could return then? I don't believe the elites would come in either simply because elites at this point have you know right now they just haven't been that great you know and jules faction was really the last major elite group so i don't see that working either so what species could come and take over the covenant or you know not the covenant but reform it and in my answer i believe why not 
the, the ones that replaced the elites in the first place, the brutes. Now, you have to think upon the advantages of each type of covenant. The main advantage as an enemy of the original covenant was how religious and philosophical they were. It was not about them being a military force. It was about them being a religious hierarchy. They were essentially wearing religious-based armor. Think of the ideologies and traditional wear of the prophets wearing these cloaks and, you know, these huge symbolized um, metal on top of their chairs. Or the arbiter w with his silver and his constant wear of traditional almost knight-like armor. You know, it was a type of covenant that was a church. Now, the advantage of something like the Halo 4 Covenant, Halo 4 and 5 anyways, is that it was led by someone like Juom Dama. Because Juom Dama was a big deal, and it was more militarized than the previous covenants. Like, genuinely, it was, yeah, mainly because it was militarized, but also it was led by Jewel, a ruthless and powerful leader. Like, Jewel was... In reality, atheist. He did not believe in gods or, you know, traditions and stuff. He was willing to break Sangheili tradition to get what he wants and break covenant beliefs. That's what made him intimidating. The fact that he was willing to do anything necessary to achieve what he wanted. You know, like, co like the covenant would never nuke a halo ring or destroy a holy relic based planet belonging to the forerunners which the covenant believed were gods they would never do that yet jewel was willing to do that but the problem is with this covenant now dead we're forced to now see where can we find the next thing and i believe we should have the opposite of that clean covenant you could argue the halo 4 and 5 way was that but it was more of a middle ground between a traditional covenant and a complete non-relative. And that's where I believe this could now serve. Because if you have a covenant that's ruled by the brutes, the brutes could serve as a greedy and more realistic vile enemy. It wouldn't be clean anymore. It would be dirty desired warfare. And it would finally show a hand of the covenant that could be be reformed into a system that would be big. The brutes from Halo 3 were that type of ideals. They would brutally beat people as they tried to get information off of them. They would act savage in the way they'd fight. They melee and charge. They were highly deadly as enemies and that's something I would like to see again to an even greater degree. And instead of the clean plasma-based technology, you could have the brute plasma rifles and stuff, but you could also bring in the greedy spikers and stuff. And this could serve well for the future of Halo, simply because the brutes, if they got that, and then they finally had one brute leader who, let's just say they had, he had a bigger mind than a peanut, you know, who had a mind that could actually unify it, could make the Brutes a devastating threat. And through that, they would be able to essentially, in a nutshell, create a covenant that could maybe not be as powerful as the other, as the original covenant, or even, you know, the original Jules faction, but at least a covenant that's more brutal, which means they are able to achieve victory far greater than the covenant factions, simply because even if they don't have as much technology and stuff, they're willing to go through great lengths to get what they want. Because brutes could be that. You know, they don't believe, brutes don't believe in these huge traditions and stuff. They just believe in getting what they need. And while the Brutes, yes, in Halo 2 and 3 believed in the Great Journey, that didn't stop them from doing what they believed they wanted to do. They were willing to break Sangheili traditions and do certain things that were essentially wrong to get what they wanted. It was a general ideal to the Brutes. And that's why I believe Brutes 
could serve as the great new antagonist for covenant factions. So say this, the, the covenant in Halo 6 is not really the covenant, it's just the alliance with Cortana for those who worship her. You know, it serves on a similar note, the designs look very foreigner-like for grunts, elites, and stuff that serve her. And then after that, <clears throat> you could have it where the Covenant's kind of in hiding. They haven't really done much anymore, the factions, because they're on the break of extinction. And then one brute comes along who's strong, not so much noble, but cunning, and a brute that would be able to decimate most enemies would come in, claim his ideas, and have his plan to crush humanity and finally conquer and take what's rightfully theirs and by doing this they would reform a new type of covenant what it would be called i don't know i don't know what it could be called but it could definitely be something interesting and something worthwhile you know because the possibilities are endless and if you had the brutes lead it would create something interesting, something creative, and something new that we have not seen before out of a covenant, essentially a covenant type. So yeah, guys, that's overall what I think. What do you think of my video, guys? Do you think I was making sense? Um, do you agree what I had to say, or would you have a different idea for the future of the covenant? Please, you know, leave your like, subscribe, post in the comments what you think. And I made this video, guys because I wanted to, not because I felt I needed to, because genuinely the Covenant is one of my favorite types of enemies or antagonists in any media. I think it's like just right behind the Empire and Star Wars. So yeah, like I really love the Covenant and they're just, they're such great enemies and I look forward to seeing how they progress so yeah guys hope you enjoy please like subscribe and i'll see you next time peace